Skein podcast. My name is Sharon Graff and I am the owner of the Modern Skein, which is the yarn shop here in Montgomery, Texas. And welcome, you guys. It is episode 124. I looked it up and remembered this time. So welcome to all of you guys. Next episode's pretty big milestone, 125 episodes. I honestly did not know when I started, if I would get to 50 episodes, honestly. Uh, So thank you guys for sticking around uh, and joining me on this wonderful podcast adventure. I know there are some new subscribers, so welcome everyone. I know we are still getting really close and somehow just not able to break the 2000 mark. So if you're willing to share this podcast, if you've enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it. Share it on your Instagram, uh, share it with your friends, your net groups, whatever that also enjoy watching podcasts that you think might enjoy my podcast. So thank you for subscribing and for watching and for being a returning viewer, or if you're a new viewer, hello and welcome. And I do hope you stick around. So, as you can see, I'm wearing a new F.O. And I actually have, I have four F.O.s to show you guys. So, sit down, buckle up, grab you a beverage. I've been transporting my iced coffee in these, like, protein shaker bottles because I have them lying around. And it keeps them from spilling, which is handy. So... They're just kind of weird to drink from. That's good. I tried a new... Okay. Segue from yarn ever so slightly. So I've been conscientiously making my coffee at home rather than always stopping and spending money on an iced coffee. So I've been playing around with the different iced coffee concentrates that are out there. Yes, I know I can make my own. And I have done that before in the past, but it's never quite, I don't know if it's strong enough or brewed right or whatever. I just don't care for it when I make it myself. So I've been pretty much on like a Stoke brand or Starbucks iced coffee, iced espresso kick for a long time. I had drank the Chameleon brand many years ago. Um, and I just happened to see it in the grocery store the other day and they had like a sale on it and they had a vanilla. And when I read the label, I realized it was no sugar added, uh, which is great. Um, I'm trying to avoid added sugar right now, just in my latest little, I don't want to say latest health kick, but if you have hung around me in the shop at all, you know, I'm always going and working out, eating lots of protein not eating tons of sugar, although I will dive into a donut hole should someone bring them to the shop on Saturdays. Just saying. That being said, I am, I don't like to buy things with added sugar. That was a very long-winded way of saying that. So they have a vanilla cold brew coffee concentrate, chameleon brand, with vanilla, but no added sugar. And so I grabbed that, and this was the first time I just had it. I didn't even have any in the car. It's delicious, you guys. I mixed it with milk. It said a four ounce to four ounce ratio. I would do less. Excuse me. I wasn't sure how strong it would gonna, was going to be. It's good and good strength, but it's too much milk for me. Um, so I might do like half milk, half water next time. But it's good. And y'all on, ugh, at least the live um, Instagram viewers know. I love my half and half in my coffee. So it's not that it's too milky. Guys, it's almost. Okay, my northeast coast 
New Englandy folks are going to know what I'm talking about. It tastes like coffee milk. People down here don't know what coffee milk is and you can't buy coffee milk. And it's so sad. I love a good coffee milk. That's my grandmother, all of her family and everything is from up there and coffee milk. Mm, so good. Anyway, let's talk about knitting. So I have finished back up slightly. We went on, we meaning my husband and his whole side of the family, parents, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, the whole shebang, went to Branson, Missouri for four days, uh, kind of a last minute, last of summer getaway before the kids go back to school. And we'd hemmed a haw about kind of going or whatnot, and we ended up going. And it was lots of knitting time because it was turned into about a 12 hour road trip each way because of stops and all the things, you know. So I got a lot of knitting done. So I finished my dotted rays. Ta da! I love it. So this is the dotted rays from Stephen West. This is the, I'll say, original. Just the plain one. No. Um, modifications or anything. This is the size small and it's a good size. Before I blocked it, I was worried it might be too small, but as you can see, it fits around. It lays nicely. You could drape it over your shoulders as well. Let me show you that view. I still have an end, I think, to weave in, but see, it hits you right about your elbow. So it's a nice little wrap around shawl. The small might be a little small to, if you had a shawl pin, it, this would work. Um, but this is the size small. Uh, this took two skeins of fingering weight yarn. I am using, or I used, let me show you this up close. The color is not coming through very well. Even back here, kind of looks gray, but this is a sage, like a very dusty sage. So the yarn I used is the Le Garcon BFL sock and I adore it. So this will be at our booth at DFW Fiber Fest. This is the colorway Lorianne's Sage Advice and you can see it's that nice dusty sage color. This is amazing yarn. It's a two ply beautiful twist yarn. It does have, it is super wash and it does have a 20% nylon content. So if you are looking for a durable, BFL is already a durable yarn, but this softens up. So, I mean, it's soft to begin with, but it softens up after blocking and it feels like merino to be perfectly honest. Um, and it blooms and plumps up just like juicy. So we will have the BFL sock at our booth with of course, Max and Vincent, and we will have the British DK as well, but just this will be one of our show samples at the booth that you can squish and model and all the things. Uh, I have knit the dotted rays now, what did I determine last time? Three times? And it's just one of those good basic, I'll say fallback patterns. Also, if you are a newer knitter, um, newer crafter, hi Suri. Uh, that is looking to try short rows, but you're a little intimidated by short rows. This is a really great pattern for practicing short rows. It's very unassuming because you do not need to uh, pick up any of your wraps. You're technically not doing a wrap and turn. You are doing the most basic form of a short row but it really does help your brain kind of get into that rhythm of understanding what exactly a short row is, how are you counting them. You, I highly suggest if you are new to short rows or if you struggle with um, short rows at all, this is a great pattern, but also put a marker where you stop and turn, whether you're wrapping and turning, German short row, the double stitch, just doing, I'll say the Stephen West style, put a marker so that you can easily see it and count it. And then as you get 
more adapt at looking and seeing and reading your knitting, then it will be easier for you to find those short rows and you may progress to the, I'll say the level of not needing to mark them each individually with markers. But rather than getting frustrated with it, put a marker in, it'll make it so much easier. So that is Dotted Rays by Stephen West in the Le Garçon yarn. Okay. I said four, but I already showed this on the last episode, didn't I? I did. You know what? It's so good. I, I'll show you again. It's my, um, but I did show this. So I won't bore you. Anyway, if you want to see the details of this, this is the Field Shawl by Max Senator, and it's in the last episode. But yes, I did just realize that I already showed this. So I don't have four whips. I only have three, but that's perfectly fine. No, I didn't throw it on the floor. The couch is over there. Okay, my next whip, whip, my next finished object. Ta-da! The ends are not woven in. I just finished blocking this. This is the interference sweater. What are you doing? deciding to lick herself right behind me. This is the Interference Sweater by Max, the knitter, Max and Sear. And this is his latest test knit. So this pattern, I don't have an official date yet um, that it's gonna be released. I know the deadline to have our projects finished was the 25th of August. So there's still a little time. I'm not sure if there are other people that are still waiting to finish. Um, but I would say it's not going to happen before the 25th of August, but I would imagine a few weeks after that, probably maybe just in time for DFW. I'm not entirely sure, but I love this. So there's just some really nice finishing details on here, especially on the sleeves, tubular bind off, which I highly recommend. I love the finish. It makes it seem a little more professional excuse me um and just the color work in here and if you're intimidated by color work i know i've talked about this before this is a good beginner friendly color work because it is very short repeats um, it's only two colors you're never doing a third color in a row and it's mostly you know one by one two and three stitch floats that you do have a few that are I think the max of six or seven one two three four five seven max um, of seven that you're having to carry a yarn there are some short row shaping in the back uh, to bring that up it is generally what I would consider to be a pretty unisex um, sweater obviously max designed it for basically himself um, but I would say if you were wanting um, a more quote unquote feminine cut for the sweater, you could easily do some A-line uh, increases along your sides if you wanted. Um, that being said, I know a lot of guys, Josh is one, whenever, once I split for sleeves for him, if I'm doing a sweater for him, I will do decreases along the sides just because he has that wider shoulders but narrow waist and he doesn't like a lot of excess fabric. So if I had knit this for him, I just knit this straight as, you know, with no mods. Um, I would have, once I finished the color work right here, I would have done um, some decreases. Probably every, every probably fifth to sixth row I would have done decreases, like a four stitch decrease on either side. I did that on the Kodakus that I did for him and one other sweater, um, and it just makes it a lot more flattering for him. Um, and if you have a guy that you've got to knit a larger size because he's broad in the chest or in the shoulders or anything like that, but he does have a smaller waist, then that's an easy way you can modify. Vice versa. If you're smaller in here, but need to go a little bit larger, then it's very easy to knit, but you don't want to A-line, let's just say. Cast on, you know, let's just say a size two 
for your um, shoulders and your yoke and everything. But when you separate for sleeves, then add on extra stitches under here till you get the count of say the size three or even the size four. Um, you'll just have to do a quick sewn modification um, if you're not needing to pick up extra stitches for the sleeves as well, because most likely you won't. Um, if you do, then great, you have those extra stitches. If not, when you pick them up, you're just gonna do rapid decrease that first row um, to get back down to the stitch count that you need for your sleeve. Um, so there's some ways you can modify patterns uh, to fit you, bonus for today. But um, yeah, I love it. So the yarn I used for this, I know I've talked about it before, but this is all Double Sunday from Sandus Garn. The main body is the Colorway Camel from the Petite Knit Collaboration Double Sunday. And then we also have Whipped Cream and Sailor in the Dark. So it's all the Petite Knit yarns. That being said, I know we are, we, I have probably one sweater quantity of the camel left and I think we're completely out of whipped cream and maybe like one or two uh, balls of the sailor in the dark. It's currently out of stock but I am on the wait list to restock these exact colors as soon as it is available. She was hoping by the end of August 1st of September so hopefully this these colors will be back in the shop for the pattern release. Um, if you are interested in I'll say copying and knitting this sweater in these exact colors, or maybe there's another pattern that you'd like that's three colors and you like this color combo and you want these three colors, send us an email, themodernskein at gmail.com and I'll put you on a wait list. Just let me know how many yards you're gonna need of each color and I'll put you on the wait list and let you know as soon as it's available and send you an invoice. So there's that. Okay. Hmm. This is going to be such a fun sweater for fall. And you guys, it was like a breath of fall this morning. So we're in Southeast Texas. Yeah, we can say Southeast Texas. We're just north of Houston. If you don't have no idea where Montgomery is north and just west, but mostly just north. It's been like a hundred and three for weeks on end with like 90 to 100 percent humidity it feels like so it feels like a sauna and it's nasty out but no rain which is unfortunate but this morning it's like 70 something because when we get that we are in the 80s at night it doesn't cool down unfortunately no i say that that's a little abnormal normally we do cool down a little bit at night this year it's really hot. This morning it was like 72 degrees and you could smell the crispness of fall in the air. I don't know how to explain it, but it was just like, oh, there's hope for fall. It's coming soon. So it was just like, oh, knit all the things. It's going to be fall soon. It, I mean, it's going to be like, what's it going to be? 93 I think today which is amazing like 10 degrees cooler but it's coming fall is coming maybe it's where you are right now already and if so you're a lucky duck but okay where's my other haha <laughs> okay so my last finished object is one you haven't seen because I cast it on Saturday and I finished it Sunday it's a palette cleanser project or a great beginner knitting project. Ta-da! I knit the Wooly Waffle Hat by Stephen West. I love it. Look at the texture. It's a great. I went ahead and knit it exactly to pattern, so it is a little bit on the slouchy side for me wearing it this way. If you roll up top then it's more like a beanie style and then you have this really cool color blocked um, headband piece so I used you can see my inner lining this is all scout so this is scout in the colorway juniper and this is the driftwood color 
We have driftwood right now. Juniper is out of stock, but we have a um, order that should be coming in. Um, I think it's supposed to ship like first of September um, and it will have juniper on it. Uh, so stay tuned for that if you are looking for this color, but we have several other greens. There's lichen, there's moss. Um, there's another green too. Meadow. Um, meadow is just a little bit lighter than juniper, so same tone. Uh, but there's tons of other colors. There's rosewood. There's the new burnt orange. Rosewood's new too. You've got heather, uh, navy heather. You've got sunflower. I did a live on our Instagram earlier this week and showed scalp combos for this hat. And so if you're looking for some color ideas, check it out. This, like I said, was a very fast knit. All you need to know um, if you're a beginner knitter is knitting and purling, casting on, and then purling two stitches together, which is exactly how it sounds, but he does have videos um, on how to do that, and I guess knitting two stitches together as well. There's no provisional cast on. You can provisional cast on, but he just walks you through picking up from your cast on edge to make this super beginner friendly. Um, I love it. I love double thick, basically reversible beanies because you can, I, no, I don't have my end woven in yet. So bear that in mind, but you could totally, if you wanted to have it reverse style and have the plane on the outside with the waffle texture as your little fold up, or I suppose one of our friend's daughter it's like 14. She basically wears a hat like this, I think 24 hours a day. She always has a slouchy hat on. So this would look so cute on her. But anyway, I highly recommend this as a great palette cleanser project, a gift knit, because it's DK, it's going to go fast. Um, there is just one size written in the pattern. If you're adventurous, you could definitely modify this to a kid size by just decreasing how many stitches you cast on. Um, or if you don't like a slouchy beanie, you definitely know you only want more of a skull cap, don't knit it as long. Um, so lots of different ways you could customize this to be your own. Highly recommend it, like I said, gift knit, um, quick knit for a trip. Maybe you have plans to go see family up north or go skiing or go on a wintry holiday. You could bang these out real quick for everybody going on your trip um, to have little matching hats. That would be so cute. You could do like all the linings the same and do the outsides different or vice versa. This would be super fun. So Woolly Waffle Hat by Stephen West. Highly recommend. I'm going to fix my hat here. Okay. I realize we've been go talking for a little while, but I also have a lot of whips to show you guys. So bear with me. I don't have tons to show you in terms of what's new in the shop because I'll still have another episode that I'll film right before yarn trail and then you'll see some new stuff because we've got a whole bunch of new stuff coming in for yarn trail so stay tuned for that um but whips I think I brought all my whips okay so I definitely cast on I finished things so I cast on things but I'm pretty sure you've no you haven't seen this because I redid this okay so uh last episode you saw my tessellated vest this is my tessellated vest in completely different yarn because I decided I didn't like that. So, say hello to tessellated vest 2.0. I'm loving this combo. It's obviously me. So, long story short, I just changed up the colors because I wanted different colors. This is Andorra by Kelborn Woolens in the colorway camel for my main color 
then I switched out to the Andorra Deep Navy for the contrast and then I switched out to Moondrake Fua Fua in the colorway Toffee for my fluffy bit instead of a Surrey and I really like it. It's not quite as fluffy as the Surrey uh, so I feel like it doesn't overpower the whole thing and because I used a darker secondary color you can really see it it doesn't just wash away um, in there so I haven't made a ton of progress on this for me again mosaic knitting or slipping stitches can be kind of slow I was talking with um, somebody about why that is and we boil down to it's probably just the angle that my needles are at because of how I knit um, that makes it a slower process. It's just, it is what it is. So slow but steady uh, working on the tessellated vest. So that has been being worked on. Then when I was on the trip, I cast on a, ooh, I have lost stitches. Hold on. Hold, please. Put those back up on a needle. I cast on the Alpine Bloom Tea by um, Caitlin Hunter. Get this right side out. And I actually haven't worked on it since we got back, but I love it. So, ta da! I love the little lacy collar accent up here. And then of course the beautiful color work. So I am using Dacus Sock in the Antique Leather colorway as my main um, color. And then I'm using the Moondrake Spin Cycle Collaboration um, yarn called Moonbeams. Um, that I got when she had her little truck show here. Uh, that is what I'm using as my contrast color. So very me, but also not me because it's a fun variegated and there's going to be some like almost pinky purple bits coming up. So it'll be very interesting to see. I'm enjoying it though. I love a good color work. Color work is very meditative to me. I get in a rhythm, especially with Caitlin Hunter's um, charts. I just love 90% of her charts. Um, very easily memorizable for me and just methodical. So that is my Alpine Bloom. Like I said, I'm using Dacus Sock, which is a yak, nylon, and merino blend from Red Stag Fiber. Um, it's actually somewhere on this wall over here uh, in the antique leather colorway. So that's that one. Then... Um, oh, let me show you this because I haven't shown this in a little while. This is also one of my projects. That's my stay at home project. Um, hold on. A lot of bits in there. Um, so this is my ha, Chevronopolis by Max the Knitter, Maxim Sear. And this is, this is a project that I'm like giving myself a lot of grace and flexibility on because I only pretty much work on it when I'm at home. Um, really typically only on like Sunday or the weekends um, because it's, it's all slip stitches. And for me, I do best with slip stitches. And I've talked about this um, reading the written out instructions versus a chart my brain just doesn't my brain loves charts for lace color work hates brioche and slip stitch charts mosaic charts just doesn't doesn't work but ta-da so this is the start i have just switched on so it takes three skeins of your spin cycle or your contrast um yarn and so I just switched to my new, I'm kind of going through my stash of spin cycle 
and fading in. So the first one, which is the majority here, is Stay Ready. And then I've just started fading in this one, which is Angry Birds, but it has a lot of gray and just a little bit of green into it. And then I didn't bring it, I don't think my, I was gonna use the Moonbeams and I switched out, did I put it, no, to another one that goes a little from the green to a little bit of yellow and then kind of back into some grays and blacks. So I think it's, I keep wanting to say light years, but I, I don't think I went with light year after all. It's, I think it's another one. But anyway, that is this project and I'm loving it. I love the, the changing direction of the chevrons and how it got really dark in here and you don't have as much contrast and it's just going to be super fun so my main color by the way in this is the black the um the new black so it's called raven um in andorra from kelborn woolens this is their sport weight yarn they have two black shades there's ink black which is more of a extreme charcoal and then this is Raven, which is a true black. So that's my stays at the house by the couch. Look at that bag. It's so cute. Yes, I treated myself on my birthday to a Hohe and Co. bag. This is her little woven leather bag. It was the set where you got the mini and this one. And it's navy blue. It's my bag. It's perfect. Uh, so there's that. And then I've got two more whips that I just cast on. This one I'm going to have to, I realized I was doing the, I read the pattern too quickly and I was doing the increases wrong, but I just started. So it's not very much I need to rip out. So ta-da, this is my little cast on. Did I bring my picture? No, I left the instructions at home. Um, this is the Mohair Gallant sweater by Kadri. And it's like a funnel neck, just mohair, very like cozy, airy, breezy um, sweater. And I love it. So it's using mohair double. You could also use lace weight Surrey held double as well. But I am using the colorway Burnt Sugar from Sandus Garn in the Tin Silk Mohair held double for this. And it's gonna be so good. So, so good. It's so soft. I love this. Um, it's not a hard pattern. Just actually read how she says to do the increases for your, it's like a raglan basically, but it's not, you're doing lifted increases and I just, read it wrong and did them wrong so I was like why do I have holes that's why so uh, I need to fix that but that is a fun project um ba -ba -ba -ba. this I do have a picture I believe yesterday the world the knitting world what fell in love with Petite Knits new Eva cardigan. Just that classy um, classy not grandpa style cardigan but just slightly oversized cozy cardigan. She also this one unlike say the champagne cardigan or anything else this is just for DK. There's no mohair written into the pattern. You don't have to try and substitute or change your gauge. It is written for just a plain DK weight, 20 stitch gauge. Um, I'm loving the construction of it because it's basically, it looks like set in sleeves, but it's not. Um, and so I'm to the point where we start doing the sleeve cap and I'm so excited. So I'm using Sandus Garn Double Sunday again, my new favorite. Um, you could easily use um, Red Stag Fiber Estate Decay if you're preferring a superwash garment. You could use um, Kelborn Woolen Scout would be gorgeous. It's like this heathery kind of design. Of course, Double Sunday is amazing. Um, 
I also think that this would be gorgeous in Le Garçon as well for a little more of a na natural, slightly rustic, um, non-superwash garment. You could also use, if you have a sweater quantity of um, Hedgehog Piper Tweety, that would be a great option as well. Mm -hmm. You might need to stay tuned for the next couple weeks. Just saying. Um, get on our get on our email newsletter because then you're going to be the first to know uh, if something has arrived. Ha, hint, hint. Um, so, this is the start of my Eva. It's kind of weird on my needles here. But you have the back, and I really love how she does this nice structured seam here. It's going to be nice and strong. You're not going to have a droopy, saggy shoulder. Um, and then you do this little front piece. And then we're going to be, I think, picking these up and starting the shoulder cap, I believe, is the next step. But loving it. So the colorway that I'm using is the Steel Gray Double Sunday. Um, I, like I said, I know a lot of our colors in Double Sunday are low or not enough for this sweater um, because I think the smallest size, um, the extra extra small, which is still a generous because she did design it to be fairly oversized in the bust. Um, I think the extra extra small is a 41 inch circumference finished. So just bear that in mind. Um, I believe that one's taking nine balls. Um, and I know we're kind of limited at the moment what we have 10 to 20 balls of in colorways, but we do have, um, by the time this goes up, it may have arrived, um, fresh stock of double Sunday in 10 or more, um, sweater quantities. But let's just say you go on our website and you see a color of double Sunday that you love, but we are either completely out or, you know less less balls that you need send us a message because 90% of the time we can get that um, matching dye lot for you um, unless it's out of stock with send us garnt but I can always let you know and give you a uh, color substitute if there's a color that's very similar to what you were looking at uh, as well so don't hesitate to reach out if you're looking for double Sunday or Sunday for that matter if you have a fingering weight but you're like oh you only have two balls of this left can you get more yes absolutely 99 percent of the time we can it's just a matter of getting the shipment in so double sunday this is the steel gray and i love it this is going to be just that perfect gray go with everything denim cardigan i love it i love her whole outfit with the sandals i already was googling where to find sandals like that vince camuto has a pair if you're interested don't buy them before I can. But that is all my whips that I brought to share with you guys. So, updates, information, whatnots. Texas Yarn Trail um, registration is officially closed for that, FYI. Um, but if you did sign up and got a bag, got a guide, whichever, and selected our shop as the um, collection point for your bag. Uh, we should have them available for pickup by, well, by the time that this podcast airs, because it should be Friday and this should go up Saturday. But um, check out social media if you haven't seen an update. The other thing to say is for the duration of the yarn trail, we'll be open 10 to 5. So we will be open extended hours. Normally we're open 10 to 4, Tuesday through Saturday will be open 10 to 5 Monday through Saturday. So we will be open Monday um, during the yarn trail, one Monday, and we'll be open two Sundays, noon to 5. So the, let's see, it starts on the 25th. 27th, I believe, is the first Sunday. We'll be open noon to 5. And what is it? Um, the 3rd of September will be open ten, uh, noon to 5 as well. So definitely, even if you're not participating in the yarn trail, take advantage of our extended hours, extended sit and stitch times. Obviously, Saturdays um, and Fridays, you can stay till five o'clock. 
Um, come hang with us on Monday. Um, all the things. Sundays. Su Sundays is basically just sit and stitch from noon to five. It's come, drink coffee, have fun, yak yak, and um, knit all the things, crochet all the things. So that's that update. Um, after the yarn trail, we will go back to our regular hours of 10 to 4. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. New things in the shop. Okay, speaking of Santa Garn, we got in some back ordered Sunday that we had classic black and white. So 1001 for the white. This is the Sunday, the fingering weight, and 1099, which is the black. So jet black and bleached white are back available. And there are two new colors by Petite Knit in the Sunday. We have Poppy. It's not, it's coming across on my screen anyway as a very orange. It is an orange, but it's definitely an orange coral. So it has that pink undertone to it. Very, very pretty. Different from the, that orange feeling, which is a true orange. This has a, like I said, a, a peachy coral undertone. And then plastic pink. So this is reformulated and replacing frozen yogurt um, that she used to have. So this is plastic pink and it's just a little more pink and a little less purple um, than that frozen yogurt color. And it is very much a plastic Barbie-ish pink. So y'all know pink's not my thing, but if it is yours, we have that. Uh, then for books, the Crochet Anthology. I can't remember if I touched on this last time, but this is a book released from Pom Pom with some of their most popular um, crochet patterns, including Water Clover, which I did earlier this year and love it. There's um, 10 different crochet patterns um, that they are featuring uh, just for crocheters in the one publication. So we do have those available online and in store. And we also received the Paula Pereira Textured Knits book. I adore the cover and the sweaters and garments in here. There are 20 different patterns in this book. This is like a beautiful coffee table book. Um, I've already grabbed mine because it's just in line of books. Just oh. This is going to be a very specific scent memory, but it's a mix of library. And if you've ever walked in to a cruise ship, Elemis Spa, very specific, I know. It has that like smoky lavender sea salt scrub and old books smell. I don't know how. But I would take this in the form of a candle, in the form of body spray, like, yeah, I'm going to sit here and huff this book. <laughs> um, but there are beautiful patterns in here. There are um, garments and there are accessories as well. Um, I was going to see if I could show you some of the pictures. without giving away too much. This is a really pretty sweater. Of course, the one on the cover. I love that one. There's also a really pretty cardigan that I showed on the live the other day. Oh, these socks are cute. Y'all know I'm not a sock person, but how cute is that? With a little like gathered tuck kind of stitch. Super cute. Um, this fun kind of lacy yoke. Oh yeah, this is the cardigan I showed on the live. This one was designed in shelter. Um, so you can use shelter or um, Germantown would be a great option. So definitely grab this book if you haven't already. I know we have, we have a decent amount of copies left, but they have been going pretty quick. So definitely grab your copy. The 
da, 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 da. there is another line of publication, um, Observations in Knitting uh, by, I think it's Lottie Lothgren, Loda Lothgren. Um, that is going to be released on the 25th of August. So we will have those um, available. In fact, the pre-order, if it's not already, it is live. Uh, it's going to be live on the website so you can pre-order your copy of Observations. And the pre-order for Lina issue, what are they on now? 18? The fall issue or autumn issue for this year. Uh, the pre-order should be up on the website. Like I said, if it's not already, within this next coming week. So definitely get your book pre-orders in. Uh, that way you never miss your publication. Again, I love Lina Magazine and Lina Publishing. They're my personal favorite books, pretty much. Um, and we always like to have them in stock for you guys. So I know this was a little bit of a longer, more rambling episode, but I had a lot of good stuff to share with you guys. So thanks for bearing with us, with us, me and Surrey, I guess. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check out the website, calendar of events. You can still sign up for Nick Graffiti's classes and the meet and greet as well. We do have availability left. Um, you can also check out our DFW information for meeting Max and Vincent at our booth. Again, that will be Friday and just a little bit on Saturday morning. And what else? store hours for yarn crawl, all the things. So stay tuned and we will see you on the next episode and uh, happy knitting, crocheting, and all the things guys. Have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm.